Rudy Holbeck, I am 21 years old and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Meu nome é Lucas Augusto Souza Cruz, eu tenho 22 anos e eu sou de São Paulo, Brasil. Meu nome é Chen Shu Yu, eu sou de Zhongguo, Fujian, Xiamen, eu sou 23. Meu nome é Brittany, eu sou 20 anos e eu sou do United Kingdom. Me llamo Talia, tengo 22 años y soy de San José, Costa Rica. Another like Biggie was saying, I need a good girl be praying for my success, not my downfall. This G ain't messing with your guts. Not in that G2 and they'll take a look. I saw these sap you your ready. You hitting that church, but you roll round in that turn. And then I came through looking Luke Kang to become full new flame. What your Luke Cage you didn't lunch too. What I like most about music is how much it can bring people together, how universal it is. You can literally have music for any occasion. If I'm having a great day, then I know I can chuck on like some hype music and stuff like that. But if it's a more somber day, I could chuck on some gospel. Honestly, if there wasn't anything that didn't have music, then I don't think it would be as emotionally charged. There's nothing you can't do without music. And honestly, you, you can't live without music. She a queen and she knows it. Beautiful and she shows it. I started doing music when I was about two. My mom used to take me to these toddler percussion group. After that, when I started primary school, I picked up the violin in first grade or year one. And then in year three, I picked up trumpet. And then I guess the hip hop side of it, I picked up in year seven when I just got into high school. It's pretty much just taken off from there, garnering knowledge, fine tuning things and all that such. Own career, so she don't rely on men for any money. Ebony glow from the motherland. My high school went on this Christian outreach trip to Thailand in year 11. And when the trip was planned, my birthday was on one of the days. So that night we had like a karaoke night and I did my little like lip sync thing with the group of friends. But then I was like, hey, do you mind if I perform one of my songs? Which at the time was the first song I ever put out called Take Off. And they're like, yeah, sure. And it was dope because when I got up on stage, it, every single one of my cohort was singing along to the chorus. And it was just a crazy first moment of, oh my goodness, this rapping my lyrics back to me. Like I didn't even know they knew it like that. I'd say that was one of maybe many defining moments, but that one sticks out to me. Up in the club, damn near looking like a carry bug. Like a Purple mama on my back, three stripes looking like a racing car. Now I'm I came here on exchange in 2018, and I spent a year here studying my Bachelor of Music, but I haven't moved here just yet. What drew me to the US is the culture, I'd say. I've been wanting to come to the US for years now. My high school went on a music tour to the US in 2014, and before that, I mean, I spent most of my life watching American TV and movies, and listening to American music. And so I've just been surrounded by it. And I mean, all my friends back in Australia always joke that I just give up such an American vibe. I think another thing is just the fact that there's actually people of color here. And I really enjoy being around people who look like me. And 
that's probably one of the reasons why I especially want to move as well, aside from the, the music aspect. I've been thinking about coming on an exchange trip to the US, probably from 11th or 12th grade, coming in as soon as like I was applying for colleges and universities. When I got into my university, which is the University of Western Sydney, I figured out that they had an exchange program and it wasn't just for people studying international studies. And I'm like, I got to jump on this as soon as possible. Being an exchange student here was probably the best year of my life, in my personal opinion. And I think the thing that made it so good is the fact that I involved myself. I wanted to involve myself in all the organizations that I did. I was board members of two organizations, the Black Student Union and BBJ, in which I was one of the founding members. I was in the gospel choir. I was very prominent and active in the Upperman African American Cultural Center. And that made the experience so much better because then I garnered a community of other people who I know that if I come back, that they will always have a place for me to stay or they will always help me rather than if you just go on a regular exchange and you leave and you've made like one or two friends that you might talk to every month or so. But I know that the, the community of people that I made this time is people that I know I can take into the future for years to come. I grew up in a city called Campbelltown, which is in the southwest of Sydney. That's where I pretty much have lived for my entire life. I grew up with dad and a mom, and then I had two siblings. Also, my grandma has also been present. She used to live with us in our home where I grew up. She was always there. I used to go down to hers like after school and watch whatever cartoon was on TV and she'd always have cookies or something like that. I'd say my friends and community were kind of diverse in a sense that I did a lot of extracurricular activities. I was in the orchestra, I was in the band with my music and then I played soccer, I played cricket, I played basketball, did swimming, tennis, all, all sorts of sports and stuff like that. I went to a private school for my whole schooling life. I went to this primary school called St. Peter's Anglican Primary School. And then my high school was called MacArthur Anglican School. So it was a private and Christian schools. And I was just involved as well. When I was graduating, I was the leader of the orchestra. I ended up MVP of the basketball team, point guards, uh, on the soccer team, four by 100, cricket captain, first chair trumpet of the band. It was nice, it was like little little pockets of people. And then also obviously I had like my friends within school, which I'd say are the people who I held on to more so. I have a number of friends from primary school. We went to different high schools, but we'd all come together for youth group at church. And I still have a group chat with some friends from high school just to stay in touch here and there, well, even though we graduated about five years ago. And I guess that kind of ties into why, like, on my exchange trip that I was like, I can't sit around and do nothing. Because I was so involved in high school and primary school that it's like, I know nothing else but to be involved. Even though my ultimate goal is to move to the US and I would rather be here, but I know home is just home. It just feels nice to be there. I remember when I left after my exchange trip, I was like 30 minutes out and I could feel like I was almost there. And as soon as we broke through the clouds, like I just was smart. I felt like I was smiling for like 15 minutes because I'm like, as much as I know that I was so emotionally charged when I left, it was a nice feeling to be back. The thing I miss about spending time with loved ones is just being around them. It's always nice when like it's a Christmas dinner or Easter, if we happen to go on a drive, maybe if one of us isn't busy. It's always nice when we all come together and I feel like sometimes I take it for granted, but I guess the older I get, the more I start to appreciate it, even if sometimes they might, have, they might not seem like I show it.
is that I'm able to get my mind off of things like school and just other worries that I have and it just gets some time for me just to relax and get my mind back in its place. What made me start working out, well, it's just for fitness sake because I was always that little chubbier kid in high school or middle school. That's like what proposed to me, but the hardest part is just keeping up with it. At the very moment, my dad had like battle cancer twice now, but he was cured both times and he got a lot into health and just taking care of himself after that. So that also brought me back to it. I moved to the United States, that happened in 2016, and I came here just for school. I didn't come as an exchange student, I came as a regular four-year student. So I came here right after high school, and I was 18 years old. So what made me come to the US is that the school system back in Brazil is different. So when you apply to university and you get into college, you need to pick your major by the first day of school. And I had no idea what I wanted back then. I came here like as a tourist just to visit Disneyland, like stuff like that. And some friend brought up like, oh, why, why don't you apply to come to the United States? And you know, when you think of something, you're just like, yeah, that probably won't happen and just push it aside. But when I started looking into it and then I found a company back in Brazil that helped with the application process because it's a lot different. And since I had people in the United States, my father works in Brazil, but he works for an American company. And that's also what proposed me to go to North Carolina because the headquarters are here. So it made it easier if I needed anything for any sort of reason. At the same time, I would be by myself, like moving out of Brazil. I would have people around that could like help me and support me in any way. What made me want to decide to come to another country to study was the challenge that it proposed. I always saw myself as like trying to do something different and just being like kind of a risk taker. And the challenge of being in another country was like very appealing to me. I knew it wasn't gonna be easy, but I thought about, man, like four years from now, looking back and just looking at everything that I've been through would be really amazing to look at. And the growth that that would like propose to me or everything that I would been through. And now that I'm about to graduate in this, this May, I definitely look back and I see like, man, like I've been through a lot like these four years, but even though they were hard, it's still like for the best because I like to compare like myself from earlier years. And I usually say like, wow, if like Lucas from now saw Lucas from like before coming to the school, they would not agree or be able to like converse in a lot of like ways and just think entirely different. So I would say the challenge and part of me also wanted to kind of be by myself and like grow a little individually because I love my parents and I love the community that I had back home, but I felt like I needed something to boost myself up and kind of learn what I personally liked and what I wanted. And just another aspect was learning how to be by myself and have that individual like growth because having a great support system helps a lot, definitely. But I feel like you also get too used to it. And I am a very indecisive person. I had like a lot of trouble, like, is this what I want? Is this what people are trying to make me lean on towards? So leaving home and coming here, I felt like, okay, now I'm gonna learn how to like handle things myself and don't need to rely as much on other people. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's growing yourself individually and just becoming a better person on your own as well. Life as an exchange student, I'd say like, is just adventurous, honestly. And it was a challenge personally, because in Brazil, you still live with your parents while you're going through college. Like not a lot of people will move out. So moving out of 18, my mom wasn't happy about that. And I'm also an only child, so it also makes sense why she wasn't like, very upset, but she helped me, she understood it. And life here just doesn't stop, like because there's always something new to like learn and just understand. My first semester was the toughest one because I had to deal with like the cultural exchange and the language. I feel like I lost my accent over the years, but when I was here, when I got here, it was a lot thicker than it is right now. And trying to get a job, I had to like understand how the social security system or number process works. And then I, I got a car later. So trying to apply for a license, studying and just understanding all those regulations like paying your taxes. So living in another country is 
challenging because you have so many little things that you need to get used to, but at the same time, it's great because it gives you a new perspective. Life growing up was a pretty usual life, I would say, back home. Sao Paulo is split into like zones, so like there's the north, the south, the east and west areas. I was born in the east where their budget is a little tighter, it's like the little poor area of the city. But my dad, growing up, he was an engineer. He started like from working in machines all the way to managing like the company, the aspects of a company. So we were able to like go to the west side of the, the city and get a better living throughout the year. So we definitely like had a boost in our style of living. At the same time, I always thought about having like a, a sibling, like a brother and a sister. I always wanted to have that, but I'm really close to my cousins because I don't have one. Our family was always really tight. I didn't have the need of like a sibling due to that. My friends in the community were really like tight knit, but it was just, we had an adapting circumstance because moving from the east to the west side, we just had to make new friends and just meet other people because they didn't transition with us to this new place but I got this from my mom I want to say like of talking and just being like good at like conversing with people so it didn't take me a long time to like make friends and I switched school so I went to a new high school and there's always like that problem as a kid like oh you're losing your friends and you're never gonna see them again like how do you deal with that but I still keep in touch with like my older friends up to this day so I always had a lot of people around me and even though like being an only child, I would get a little lonely and to a certain extent, you kind of learn how to deal with this sort of loneliness. I knew I always had like anybody that I could count on if I needed anything. So like just a friendly shoulder or like family member. We were dependable, like, we knew you could count on any other person that you needed for anything. Life was great, honestly. I miss it just the way the culture works and everything. It's a lot different. Like of personal interaction. People in Brazil, I mean, not that I don't get this here, but people in Brazil are very open and just like closed. They talk a lot about personal space and how that doesn't exist back home. The hardest thing being away from loved one is just the connection that we share with them, especially with like my parents being an only child. Throughout the years, I just got more and more attached to them. And that was one of the hardest parts coming to another country that was 8,000 miles away. It's just learning how to live without that everyday help of your parents, but also the emotional aspect of you kind of have to fend for yourself and just learn how to deal with your own. I remember freshman year, freshman semester, first semester was the hardest one. I remember calling my dad at 3 a.m. one night and just crying like, this was the worst decision ever. <laughs> and just saying like, I don't want to do this, but I still had that support even if it was from far away of him saying, you got to do what you have to do remember that you're doing this for a better reason and imagine you four years from now graduating from this university. I don't want to say it's worth the pain, but it's worth the trouble that it brings of doing that. And technology nowadays helps a lot with just video chatting and everyday texting. I, I still had that support. It doesn't feel the same, but it helped a lot. But that's what I miss about the most is just having that everyday interaction and living around them. Other than people and family, I usually say food is what I miss the most about. It's just not the same growing up with a certain kind of food and then you suddenly don't have it anymore. I try to cook it myself, but I don't have like my mother's or grandma's touch to the food, you know? But I, I say that I miss the language the most. With time being in another country, you miss speaking that language and the language that you grow up with. Being like not from the US or just being in another country as a foreigner can be good and bad. I remember I would make friends by saying that I was Brazilian. People would kind of just warm me over, which was really nice. Like I loved having that ability to make friends easily, but I also had some other negative experiences. So being back in Brazil, looking at the Brazilians, I would be considered white, like as an ethnicity there. But now I understand that like in a global perspective, I would be considered like a Latino or some people would even say I'm a person of color. But I remember when I didn't understand that and I would argue like, oh, I'm white because just look at my skin, like being very white and I had people like that would get mad over that and be like no you're not as it even felt like you're not one of us like you know you're not white and I just thought it was a little off-putting of people getting actually angry at that but when I first got my on-campus job somebody told me like oh they, you probably got the job because you were different and they just wanted to like have a broader appeal to people and 
being from another country didn't play a role in the job that I had like at all. And when I had to set up my tax documentation, I remember being called like an alien consecutively. And I know that's a term, but it also made me feel like, oh, you're another one. Like you're not part of the community, but that's just an example. Like, yeah, we're being different could play a part negatively as well, but it, it can always play a positive too. In Australia, an elephant in the room with a serious issue is race. It's interesting how it's taken here compared to in a country like Australia, where in America it's a lot more sensitive because of the history. But in Australia, people weren't being racist against them, it was more Aborigines. It doesn't seem as deep. And with all this modern music coming out, people in Australia are a lot less aware of what they're doing when they're singing along to stuff. Whilst here, there may be still a, a fair few people that are like that, but it seems like people are a lot more aware because they know the deep rooted history of some of the topics and some of the content and words that rappers and singers are, talk, are singing. Whilst in Australia, they just let anything flat for the most part, it seems. And my experience from my exchange made me notice that and then come back to Australia and go, I need to maybe crack down on maybe some of my friends that in the past I may have let that slip, but I do my research and I make sure that I know the backgrounds to stuff. And I, don't let any of that happen around me in a place like Australia. For the while I was trying to keep me way down Like the sun I you know I found my way back round People don't really treat me that different because I'm an exchange student. I mean, occasionally, and I, I allow it, <laughs> um, they mock me with, because of my accent. I might say something like burger or car park that everyone's like, huh? or they, they repeat it and they start laughing. And I'm like, really? But apart from that, I'm pretty much seen as just another one of the students that goes there. I would say the exchange for me is an exchange of comfortability and stepping out of my comfort zone of living at home and living, now living by myself, which made me realize, okay, I need to start adulting a little better. <laughs> I think what it helped with that switch up of, all right, now you're chuck, chucked into a, a position where you're fending for yourself, made me realize, okay, I need to manage my time a lot differently. I need to make sure that I'm, I, can, I can have fun, but I gotta make sure that I even it out with the work. I need to be diligent with everything I'm doing and on top of everything I'm doing, especially the fact that I involve myself in so much. So I'd say the, the exchange was exchanging, being comfortable for chucking myself in the deep end.
I like drawing because that makes me feel peaceful and quiet. I start drawing because my parents want me to. <laughs> but after that, I just fell in love with drawing and now I'm just start doing by my own. So I just do it for fun. I came here to the U.S. in 2018, in the August. The reason why I came here is my old university had a program with UNCW, so I can do two years in China and then graduate from UNCW and I can get two degrees. If I need to pick one word for describing international student, I'll choose independent. I just feel like you need to be independent to get used to the new environment and make new friends and learn to be lonely and do things by yourself. I think the biggest difference is in China you get assigned to a certain class and you stay with that class of people for like an entire school year like for three or five years and you just do everything together you take the same classes and you live with those people so it's more like a small community but here it's like you have different classes and everybody in your class are different you meet new people all the time now here i can do whatever i want because my parents cannot really control me and I think I think I enjoy more freedom here. But I really miss Chinese food because it's more healthy. I really miss Chinese soup because I usually eat rice with soup. If I don't have anything to drink, I feel uncomfortable when I'm eating. But here people just drink like Coca-Cola, <laughs> soda. Yeah, sparkling water. Now I get used to it, but I really miss soup. I feel like everything here is very expensive compared to my country. The first week here, you have to buy a lot of things uh, like kitchen stuff and bedding stuff. And I don't have cars, so I think that's the most difficult thing. You have to buy a lot of things, but you don't have car. You can only Uber and that costs a lot of money. <laughs> and I definitely cannot afford to it by myself. I need my parents' support. And sometimes I feel sorry because they spend a lot of money on me and I feel stressful if I didn't accomplish something or I didn't get good grades because I feel sorry. They could have used this money to have a better life. But my family are very supportive for my study abroad. My hometown is in a city called Xiamen. It's a city close to Taiwan and I live in the city so people have more distance. I live in apartment so people are just more like be busy and focus on their own things. We don't usually communicate to each other. So we're just basically doing our own things. So we don't usually talk to strangers. We don't say like, hey, how are you to like random people. My community is just my family. I am the only child in my family, and my father is also the only child. So I have a very simple family. I live with my parents and grandparents. I grow up with a lot of like friends, because in China, we go to school and you have a certain class. You stay with the same group of people for like an entire three years or six years. So really like a big family, so I'm not really lonely in China, even though I don't have sibling. But for my university, I moved to another city, which is far away from my hometown. So I guess that's why I'm more independent compared to a lot of people. Big change in my life was probably when I was in the second year of my high school. Because before then, I used to live with my parents. And my high school is also a boarding high school, but you can choose either live at home or live on 
campus living in the dormitory. So I want to make more time for myself to study. So I told my parents I want to move to the dormitory and live with my classmates. So I start just living on campus with other five girls. So it's like six girls in one dorm and share one bathroom. So that really uh, teach me how to get along with other people, how to better communicate with others and how to arrange your schedule to make yourself more productive and doing things more effectively. So I think that's a big change. And I think since then, I just became a more independent and more dedicated person. That's why I can do study abroad now. One memory that I have from my childhood that made me like just look at life a different way was when my grandfather from my mom's side passed away. I think I was about nine or 10 at the time. I was a little like more grown up, but I had my other male cousins that were a little younger than me. So we weren't with my grandfather at the hospital. We were just kind of just hanging out, kind of waiting to hear back. As kids, we didn't really know how to process that. And then I remember we got the news from our older like female cousin. She just like came to the room and told us. And I remember that we all like kind of just stopped whatever we were doing and kind of just contemplated for a second, like, wow, like this person like is not here anymore. And then going to his funeral, like just shook me because it was the first contact that I had like with somebody passing away. It just made me think about wow, like life can be taken out or away from you at like any particular circumstance, regardless of what you're going through. So it just made me like aspire to just like making the most out of what you can at the moment. Some days are worse days, but just trying to make sure you're like doing things you want to do and just living your life to the fullest potential possible into the circumstance that you find. So I'm super grateful for the opportunity of coming to these United States because it gives you a new perspective. I, I like to say that like I grew mentally like so much more in like four years than I would have if I stayed back home. As an exchange student, I feel like my biggest exchange in order to leave home and to come to United States was the sense of security that I had back home. I feel like that was the biggest thing I had to kind of give up. Not that I don't have my support from family and parents, but giving up that everyday help that I always had and kind of living a life that was already structured. Coming here, it's super concerned to the point that job-wise, I need to figure out on my own. Will I get a job? Will I be able to stay? Will I be able to go home? So I feel like that sense of security is the biggest exchange. But when you lose that, you're just open to so many other things and you just grow exponentially with that. Regarding if people see my point of view, I think it varies a lot from the person's actual experience. I had people trying to treat me differently, being from another country. And I think that's like walking in a very thin line. At the same time, like looking at my perspective can be beneficial. Like some people did it the right way, especially in my very first year here in the United States, I had trouble just expressing myself because my word bank is a lot limited in English than it is in Portuguese. I wasn't born here. I don't know like the cultural references and stuff. And I had people that like would be more patient and maybe speak a little slower so I could like listen and process and then give back what I needed. So I feel like it's just understanding the perspective but not going overboard. I don't need to be treated special in any way. It's just that like I just might need something different so I can like process at the same rate as like a regular American student or person. I'm just like super appreciative for like helping the international community give a voice because it's a pretty small community here at UNCW. I remember my freshman year, we had 16 of us and now every semester we get 70 new internationals. So every semester when we get new exchange students, I do this thing where I help like host them and just help them settle to UNCW. And I always will send an email to the department asking, are there any Brazilian students? If there are, tell me like their names or give me something. Then I try to get like a little community, just being around like people from the same country. And you have the same experience, the same way of living and just the same way of acting. I think that's really important. And that ties in with just missing the culture like I was talking about, just missing how life plays out there and how different it is than what it plays here. 
So just having this place where we can like make our voice heard or just as our experience because I feel like if you want to grow as a person and just understand more about the world, you got to go to another place and just understand that your reality is not the reality of many other people. And it's hard to say that because I know money comes into a big play. I wouldn't be here if, if I wasn't an only child, if I didn't get a scholarship and if I didn't work two jobs. And it's hard to tell another person, oh, you need to go travel somewhere else. But I feel like if that's possible, that's something everybody should try at least once. And because you discover more about people and you learn things that from yourself that you didn't learn. Là, je suis en train de, de bosser un petit peu. Je, je révise sur euh, des choses que j'ai appris en classe la semaine dernière. Puis voilà. I'm studying international business. And the thing I love the most about international business is the international part. I mean, I've always been very interested about business because like my parents both work within business and like I've lived in different countries as well. So I kind of like understand the business sectors in different countries. But the international part was like the most important for me because I could see how business was working internationally, like not just like in one country, but like how they were commuting from one country to another, how they were exchanging. Euh, ça va, ça va. C'est plutôt difficile, mais ça va. Studying international business is actually very wide because we study a little bit of everything. So we do accounting, we do management, we do marketing, we do human resources. So like, I cannot say that I can identify one specific career to international business because as I said, it's very wide. Within the time I've realized that I was interested in like a one specific field, which was human resources. So I realized that I'm like more of like a person that likes to have contact with people. Human resources is actually related to people, to humans. And like, I actually want to like go into that field because I realized that I just like to work with people. I also like business as well, but human resources is like a combination of business and working with people. Ben, si tu veux, je te rappelle après. Bye. Studying abroad is actually part of my course as I'm studying international business. So we have to look at business within the UK and we have the chance to study abroad for us to actually learn about how business works in a different country. The reason why I chose to come to UNCW is because, first of all, it's a smaller town, so I wanted to see how it is like to live in a small town. Second of all, it was near the beach as well, so I wanted to, I knew the weather was good and there was the beach as well. And also, it's close to like my other family members here, like it's a, it's a town which is like close to the other town where my family members live. For me, doing an exchange study in the US was easier because I knew that if I would feel alone at some point, it would be easier for me to travel to like different cities within the US to visit my family because I have family like a little bit everywhere in the US. So that was mostly the reason that made me come to the US. Here we have exams pretty much every two or three weeks. We, we have assignments every week and I have classes from Monday to Thursday. While it's back home, I have classes on Monday and Tuesday. So it's hard for me to wake up in the morning, get ready, go to my classes, then come back home, wait for my next class. Like back home, I have everything all at once and then I just don't have to go back to college again. It was so hard being here on my first week. It was a shock of culture with everything. I just had to get used to the people, 
my accent because I have a different accent so when I would be talking with people they would either find it very interesting or very hard to understand me so I'm trying now to adapt like the language that I'm using for them to understand like things that I'm trying to say and it was hard for me to to adapt myself with when I moved to UNCW. Being an exchange student is very different from being a normal student actually because there's a lot of weight that you have to carry on like you technically depend on yourself. I mean I do have my family, the support of my family, my parents and my siblings but being at UNCW like I'm by myself I don't have anyone else to help me around so I have to be very careful with like everything I do like here I do have to like budget pretty much everything I do and I guess that's a good thing because it helps me to grow as well the word I'll pick to describe how it is like to be an exchange student is independent because you got to be very independent with pretty much everything you do so whether it's something that is personal to you or things that is related to what you're studying you depend on yourself on pretty much everything I was originally born in Paris, but I moved to London when I was eight years old. And I spent most of my childhood in London up until now. When I moved to London, I moved to London with my sister, my older sister, and my parents both stayed in Paris. So I grew up with my sister and her son. So she's technically the one who raised me. I would say that I do know a lot of people in London, but I have a very small group of friends. The high school I used to attend and the sixth form as well was very diverse. So I have pretty much all type of friends. And the community I grew up with was pretty much the same as my group of friends, like diverse. So in Wilmington, it's different because first of all, it's a smaller town, so there's less people. The contrast between Wilmington and the UK is actually very big. I mean, for me, I see the difference. In the UK, you have a lot of like people from Asia, Muslim people as well. So, and in Wilmington, I barely see any. I've just mainly seen black and white people. For me, I guess I'm a very lucky person because growing up in a, such a diverse city has made me become more open-minded because I can understand where people are coming from and also I do understand that not everyone thinks like me. I wanted to be away from my family. I wanted to see how I would actually cope with living on my own. Like see if I would be able to be as independent as I am back home because I am independent but back home I have my parents to support me with pretty much everything so I do things by myself but I know that I have a backup whereas here I do things but I know that I don't have a backup so I wanted to test myself as well and see if I would be able to cope with life and how I would do things on my own. The hardest thing about being away from my loved ones is that um I miss my friends the most, like my friends group in China because here everybody is very independent and they are they doing their own things. But I really miss when I was in China, I always stay with a group of people. We always do things together. I really miss that kind of atmosphere and you always have somebody to talk with. Now I just become more lonely. I think people respect my opinion because whenever I talk in the class, people pay attention to my opinion. They listen to me carefully. So I think they didn't like overlook me or anything. Obviously, I'm a foreigner. So once people recognize that I'm from a different country, people might talk slow, slower when talking to me and use like easier vocabulary when talking to me, which I'm appreciate it. <laughs> In China, I'm just a normal person and I talk to people more naturally. But here it's like 
I can feel like people try to make their words easier when talking to me. I feel like here people talk about politics and things related to race. But I feel like I'm the outsider of that kind of topics and I have no place to say my opinion because in China we don't really talk about like race or politics. So whenever people are talking about this kind of stuff in the US, I just keep silence. Sometimes it makes me a little bit awkward because I really cannot say anything and I feel like it's a sensitive topic. So I just don't say anything. <laughs> I like beach because I feel like I can go anywhere. It's not like closed, like it has more space. I like beaches and like oceans because going to beach is like very relaxing. Feeling the ocean, like waving noise, like waving sound. That is so relaxing and I like watching the birds and stuff. We have like fake beach in Tokyo, but it's not really clean. The water is not the pretty, like it's not blue, like beautiful water or anything. So when I go to beach, I feel like I can release my stress and like pressure. I don't need to think about anything and it's very relaxing. For food, I love meat, pork, chicken, beef, and I love ice cream. I love especially I love cookie dough ice cream. I just really need to eat meat like at least like once in a day because it's just my thing. And then if I don't have anything like any pork, chicken, or beef or anything, I feel like something is lacking. I just really love eating like steak and those stuff. I remember my mom and I used to go eat out like a lot like when I was elementary school student and like middle school student and I remember I always ask her like can I have like some steak or like stuff and then like we go out and so there's a Japanese barbecue restaurant close to our apartment at least once in a week we went there it's still good memory and and I'm still like love like the Japanese barbecue. If I have to pick one word to describe being exchange student is challenge. Like everything is different so like many like situation is very challenging like Making friends is also challenging and then like studying for academic and of course like language challenging but it's really good opportunity to try and challenge like so many stuff. In the very beginning of the doing study abroad thing, I thought people treat me differently with others because I'm an international student and like I'm Japanese and I used to feel like isolated sometimes it was hard because I thought like they don't really treat me like as a I don't know like regular because I think because of language or how I speak or something this is my second year UNICW and then it's getting easier for me to talk with more people even though like I cannot speak like perfect English, I still like I'm getting more confidence and I'm learning how like to interact with people. So right now I'm not really feel like people treat me differently. I feel like many people treat me as the same as other people or some people treat me like like you're Japanese and then like you were so cool like you know like you can speak English and that's so cool like you know some people like 
makes me like feel like you know kind of special or something so i like that <laughs> yeah and i like the fact like people ask a lot of questions because one of the main purpose is sharing culture so i'm glad like people like to ask questions and like try to know like other culture the biggest obstacle i facing right now is time managing because i'm very bad like i'm really bad at like making plans or <laughs> managing time i think that's my weakness also like sleeping time and uh, like studying time and also like time i can hang out with friends or like more having a fun time it's really hard to manage like all the stuff and also like i think i still have like a really hard time for english like i cannot read fast at all and I'm measuring communication and like we have many group work and stuff and then sometimes like my teammates starting talking about the things but like I get lost because they talk fast or like I just couldn't understand and stuff. The biggest issue I'm facing here is transportation because here the car is the biggest like thing. Like I don't have a car and like being international students or in like exchange students it's really hard to like go like many places because every time like we have to use uber or something and then like if i want to go by myself like sometimes like it's dangerous like using uber by myself in tokyo it's really easy like go anywhere because we have like nice public transportation so like if I want to go somewhere, we can use trains and I can go like anywhere. So I was used to those like city public transportation system, but like we don't have here in Wilmington. I grew up in like Shinagawaku in Tokyo. There's so many things to see and like we can have a lot of fun but sometimes like when i'm in the big city like i can be like very overwhelmed and i don't know like so much pressure sometimes so it's a really cool place but at the same time like i need break from like crowds or like people the nice thing about Tokyo is it's very safe place. Even like I was middle school student or high school student, I can walk anywhere, even though like midnight or after midnight and nobody gonna try to hurt me or steal anything. So I like the safety part. I am only child. My parents divorced when I was five. I live with my mother, but like I still meet with my father. My mother, I really respect her because like she's really hardworking and I like her talking about her job and she's working for one like the biggest company in Japan. And my father, he owns business. I went to a uh, public elementary school and then after that I went to a uh, private middle school and high school. Many of my close friends are from middle school and high school. I still have like friends from elementary school and they're really nice and then like very supportive and every time I go back to Japan like I still see them and then, like hang out with them. What I miss from the people from like fi family and from friends is I cannot really talk physically when I'm in the USA and if I have her time and then like sometimes like my friends post Instagram video or something like they're having fun for like in, in college and their friends but like sometimes you know I had a hard time for studying or adjusting culture and I wish I would be there so I can hang out with them and like go to different places. 
The thing changed my life is uh, studying abroad I did during a high school year. And I didn't think about to do study abroad before my mother asked me, like, do you want to do study abroad? And I thought like that would be really cool because at the time when I was 15, the school was getting difficult like and challenging and I just didn't really enjoy in classes but I was like I enjoy studying English I got the highest score in my class and I thought oh maybe like I should study English more so I was just so excited like to get out like from classes and like from Japan I went to public school in North Carolina it was extremely hard because I realized like even though my score like for English was like great it doesn't mean like I can speak or I can talk or I can make friends or anything and also like I had no idea like what is going on in class and stuff but my host parents they were extremely nice and I met two Italians and two from Thailand and we always hang out with each other and like that's why like they made my exchange student year like really great. That year changed like my whole like life after that because I thought like I'm going back to Japan and then like I just go like applying to the school in the in Tokyo. But because I really had a hard time during the exchange student year, I was like, oh I wanna try again to like improve my English and like try to know more people and so that brought me here right now there was two things that made me change and become the person who i am today so one of them is that when i moved to london i was attending a boarding school for a few years and going to a boarding school is like very different than going to a normal school because they teach you a lot of things like how to organize yourself, how to be responsible. And I've been taught all these things from a very young age. So I grew up with it and from like, until now I'm like a very organized person. I like to think ahead and I'm also very independent as well. And the second thing was moving from Paris to London as well. When I moved to London, I couldn't speak English. So it was really hard for me to adapt myself in that new environment because it was very different from Paris and also the language as well because I was speaking French and like everything was pretty much in English and I had to work harder. I had to like really like work much, like so much more than other people around me. Whenever I undertake something, I always want to like finish it whether I like it or not like when I moved to London I had to learn a new language and I could have easily give up and just go back to Paris but I was thinking I'm already here let me just go for it and you know like try my best to achieve my goal which was at that time learn English. As an exchange student I'm treated differently which I can understand because I'm different I guess from like people here. I mean I find it cool because I just feel like I'm different. There's something special about me. I do think that people consider my point of view a little bit too much, in my opinion. Sometimes it can it can be a little bit irritating because you know, I just don't want people to just stop at the fact that I'm from the UK. Like I want them to to just talk to me as a normal person. They don't have to just you know stop there. Something that I had to exchange was my hobbies. Back home, I take dance lessons and piano lessons as well. And having to move to UNCW um, has made me stop taking those lessons because I had to give up on this to come to UNCW and acquire more experience related to my career. I do think giving up my hobbies is a way for me to step forward in life and become an adult. Not having to go to my piano classes or my dance lesson gives me more time to focus on my assignments, to focus on my revision and eventually get better grades. So I believe that it was that time of my life where I needed to 
to just put my hobbies aside and focus on my career. I like to cook because I like making my own food because I'm kind of picky and so I like experimenting with flavors and doing it myself. I started cooking when I was really little because my mom and grandma always cooked and they always made me help in the kitchen and so I've been cooking for a while. I like to cook a lot of rice and beans, a lot of vegetables. I don't eat meat, so I've never cooked a lot of meat. I think cooking might turn into something bigger. I think I want to study nutrition when I'm older and like turn it into something and use cooking along with it. So I first moved to the U.S. when I was nine years old. We moved here for my mom's job. And then I moved back to Costa Rica when I was 14. And then I lived there for two years and I came back here when I was 16 and finished high school. So when I realized I had to leave home and come to the U.S., I was nine. So it was really exciting for me because the U.S. was always made to be like this promised land. Like honestly for me, it was just Disneyland because I always came to Disneyland when I was little and it was just the American dream. So I was really excited and it definitely was not exactly what I thought it would be. And I realized that really quickly, I think. The people here are really different. The culture is really different. And although I was little, I still was smart enough to like expect that and know that things were gonna be different. But I think it was just really different just the culture, the way people were. It took me a lot to get used to the way of life here and just a lot of culture shock. Like I went to a kind of lower class school um, for my first year here. I was in fourth grade and I had classmates that were in gangs. Obviously that was completely like nothing I was expecting at all. So it was just things like that. At first, we came to Miami because my uncle lived there while my mom was in North Carolina getting everything ready. So that was, you know, fun because it was like a little vacation. But then when I first came to North Carolina, it was definitely, I mean, we were starting from scratch. We didn't have beds. We didn't have any furniture. We didn't have anything. We we're completely starting from scratch in a new country with one suitcase to my name. So I think at first it was a lot to process for the first like year. One word to describe living in the U.S. as an international student, I would say is challenging because there are so many restrictions and expectations put on us that you have to like overcome that along with everything else that a regular 22 year old does. For me, at least, it's mostly financial challenges that I face as an international student. Getting restrictions put on me, like I, I can only work on campus and it has to be max 20 hours a week because I am here to be a student. I also have to pay out-of-state tuition and I don't get financial aid or any government aid. So that puts a lot of financial burden on my parents and my family. So San Jose was the city and it was in the valley. I lived in a very rural part that was still like the city, but it mixed in with the rural areas. Everyone's always happy and very supportive and you feel a big sense of community. My parents are Peruvian, they're from Lima and they actually met in Costa Rica. And I have an older sister, she's four years older. My grandparents and my aunts and uncles and everyone still lives in Peru, so I go visit quite often. And then I still have, you know, a big group of friends. We try to keep in contact, but if we don't talk all the time, that's okay because we both have our lives going on, but they'll always be there when I go. School was fun. It was very challenging. 
I went to a private school because my mom was a teacher, so I got a scholarship. So it was definitely a struggle when I was little growing up with a bunch of, you know, wealthy kids and being the one that's not wealthy. The education was definitely a lot better. It was a lot harder for me, and especially when I moved back from here, it took a lot to catch up, especially in math and obviously Spanish. In Costa Rica, I face a lot of more financial problems in here. The labor laws are not nearly as good as you know they are here. When I was working over there, I was working like 10 hours a day, 50 hours a week, getting paid like $4.50 an hour. So I think it's definitely easier to gain experience and like make money and climb your way up to the top here than it is in Costa Rica. Meanwhile, here, I think I face a lot of problems with just immigration itself, like the immigration laws, figuring out what to do with your visa status, like trying to become a citizen, all of that stuff I think is like a big struggle for me here. What I miss most about home would be the food for sure. And also just the way of life, just living kind of without that pressure of always having to do something, always having to be better than the next person and just having so many like expectations to do so many things in everyday life and like in the future, like for your future plans. I really miss just being able to just just do what you're doing and like also relax and like take some time for friends and family. The hardest thing about being away from family for me is just to know that they're getting older and that there's nothing I can do about it and that anything could happen, honestly, and I'm not there. And just knowing that, you know, my little cousin's growing up, everybody's moving, things are going on with or without me. A turning point for my childhood was definitely moving to the United States and also having to move back home and then back here. Just like all the moving, I think, was definitely very impactful. I think it was just times in my life where I would realize like who really was there and who really wasn't. I would realize how temporary things can be. It forced me to learn that things were temporary and that life is gonna move on with or without you and that you just have to kind of catch up. Something that I don't really like about my Japan, like Tokyo culture is in our culture, everybody has to do the same thing. Like, you know, if we do something different with like from other person, like people think I'm crazy or like weird or something. And maybe some people think Tokyo has many diversity and like, many like it's big or something but people don't really care about like other culture and like there's so many stereotype things going on and like i thought like i want to see like more bigger world and then like i wanted more diverse because i only grew up with japanese people like there's no other than japanese but i knew like us has more diversity and opportunity to meet with more people and different background and different culture, different countries. I feel like there are two types of people who care about exchange students and then who don't really care or like not interested in like exchange students. I realized like some people really interested in learning about international students. On the other hand, like others like don't really care much. I feel like those people to be more open because it's more fun like to learn about like different things and like we can have many different perspectives and stuff and then like I'm pretty sure like it's getting more and more like global and international in the future so it's really important to know like we have many people who have different backgrounds Biggest exchange to come here is definitely time to spend with my family and friends in Japan because I'm kind of like sacrificing the time like that I can spend with my parents and like we can go to travel more and stuff but I gave up that thing but like I believe like I'm getting more like I'm getting better things in my life because I got like so many experience here and then like 
I learned like so many culture thing and then like it motivated me like more to get to know other culture and stuff and then like it just like opened my mind more. I don't think people ever just stop to think anything about my experience as an immigrant or really anyone's. I think people will either label you like, oh, that's just an immigrant and like, that's it. And just whatever predisposed judgments or like opinions they have on immigrants. I don't think it's likely to come across someone who will stop and think or ask even what all you have been through, what your experience has been like, what your experience is like in the US. I do definitely see that with a lot of my peers and a lot of the international students, especially at UNCW, since it's such a small school with not a lot of international students. And I definitely see how they are completely just kind of like seen as like the others as opposed to just another UNCW student. I do feel like I've lost out on a lot of my childhood and my teenage years, just having that steady growing up with, you know, all my friends, just like doing the things I was already doing and a lot of personal and academic achievements as well. I was taking a lot of courses at my school in Costa Rica that were going to set me up for like a title there, whereas when I moved here, you know, they didn't count and a lot of just cultural things I've had to let go of, but I've definitely gained a lot of good education, good knowledge, good resources at this school, a lot of good experiences, like getting so many different perspectives in life and meeting so many different types of people. I think by moving here and, you know, being in this situation, I've definitely matured a lot, especially like when I was little, it, it forced me to grow up a lot faster. Here we go again, rule coming in, about to blow again. My current goals is to apply for a postgrad of a master's of teaching. My goal is to probably get into one here in the US. I'm leaning more towards like UNCW because it's a comfortable. I, I, I know it here and I feel like the black community here is so strong. Another goal is with my group, the DM season, is to keep building our brand, keep performing. And we put out our first project last year. It's called Volume One, so check that out. Also on streaming sites, our social media is also all the DM season spelled DM and then season is F Z N. Then personally, with my music, I'm both a solo artist and in a group. So my solo artist's name is Rue capital R, U, U, period. I also go by another alias of the cultured black kid, which is my handle on pretty much all so social medias. I'm working on a project right now that I hope to put out sometime later this year and check out some of my stuff on Spotify, Apple Music. My ultimate goal is to start my own record label. And I kind of want to be like a record label teaching school type thing where like you bring the student up through the the teaching school and if they are interested in hip hop and R&B with their music maybe we sign them to like a, a contract under the the label or something like that I don't know it's it's like a work in work in progress but that's kind of the, the gist of the idea so what you going to do what? come mess with the crew My biggest obstacle at the moment is just figuring out what happens after graduation because I'm graduating this May and after graduation I get 60 days just to stay in the country as like a leisure period but after that my visa expires so I would be forced to go back home. I haven't made up my mind if I would like to live in the US like permanently or just try to stay here for a couple of years to get experience because the United States is a great place for opportunities, especially for work-wise. And I need to apply for it to get an internship from the government. They need to accept me and then they need to say, okay, you are free to get an internship anywhere. And that process can always, I heard it can take like six months for, for me to hear back from them, or they could always deny it. And if I get denied, then I need to go home regardless. 
So it's just trying to put all that in perspective, like figure out how I can apply after applying, create plans and knowing that anything is uncertain at the moment. Even if I had a company propose like, oh, we can have you, if the government says no, then I also need to have a plan, okay, how I'm gonna go back home or anything else. So what the future holds for me is very uncertain at the moment, but what I have planned, like the best outcome for me would be working with graphic design. I would love to work for like a marketing agency doing any sort of advertisement pieces, illustration, drawing, creation of anything. But in general, very uncertain. I just need to figure out if I'm able to stay in the country. If I am, I can stay up to a year. And then after that year, I would actually need to get a work visa which goes through like a lottery process. And I heard from people that is very difficult, but I'm willing to try it anything at this point. Current goals is to go to a good grad school in the UK. I apply for many university in the UK and now I'm still waiting for the offer. I think the biggest difficulty I'm facing right now is I don't know what to do in the future because now I'm studying abroad in the U.S. and I'm going to the U.K. for my master degree as well and I just really don't know what to do in the future and I don't know which city, which country that I'm going to. I just want to do something that can travel all around the world. So maybe business? I am thinking about doing a master's, most likely in human resources, but then again, I'm still unsure on what to do. Personally, I don't have a specific career that I want to pursue. I just want to work within a business. However, I want to become a motivational speaker. That's what I really, really want to do. I want to motivate other people who don't really know what they want to do with their life because at some point of my life, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, I was doing all type of things, but I didn't have a specific goal. And like with the time, I'm realizing that I'm working hard for it to, to find out what I want to do. And I want people around me and especially the next generation to know that if you want to achieve something in life, you just need to, to work hard for it and not give up. And that's what I want to do. That's my actual goal is to motivate the next generation. Right now, like I'm trying to find internship and like trying to figure out like what kind of like company I want to apply for and stuff. My biggest goal is like getting job, hopefully in Tokyo, but I hope like I can have a work experience in the USA as well, like for internship or something. In the future, I'm thinking to go back to Tokyo to get job because getting visa is really hard part. It's extremely hard to get job in the US as like being international. And then like if I want to challenge to work in the US, I can try like apply after. Another goal is making one organization for especially international students because I know like how difficult English is and then like how difficult like adjusting like in cultural situation or making friends. So that's why like I really like want to make one organization to include many international students and also like American students. Hopefully I can make the organization and then like we can have many events and then we can collaborate with other organization and like share our culture and at the same time like we can learn like more American culture and stuff. Right now one of the biggest obstacles is graduation and again just immigration. I am struggling to figure out what to do when I graduate because as an international student you you basically have to go back to your country when you graduate we get the option to do one year of work within your field but then after that you have to either get a sponsor or leave and it's just a lot to do and it's a hard process and you have to pay to just try to stay in the country 
Eventually, I do want to go to grad school to study nutrition, whether that be a master's degree or a doctorate or something. But right now, I can't do that yet. But I feel like I've definitely grown as a person and been able to just know how to deal with more things in life, just know how to kind of react when life just changes and knowing like just how to adapt to the way life changes and the way people change and like things are in and out, everything is going to change. And I think just getting that knowledge on just reacting well and reacting on time, I think is a very good skill to have that I learned. I don't know like who is going to watch the video, but like, I wish like, I don't know, maybe if they see like they see other international students stuff like they should like or they try to say hi or like how are you doing or try to be a little bit care Um, it's just me cursing, yeah. <laughs> I'm from China and I'm turning 23 years old. Can you say that in Chinese? Oh, oh, oh. Not in English? <laughs> Not in English. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs>